Hi, my name is Sarah. Um, this is my first ever vlog, and um, I th I think that it's entirely likely that I will have zero viewers. Um, but I really wanted to do this for myself because I love thinking about knitting and talking about knitting. Um, and knitting vlogs have like just brought me a lot of joy and calm and knowledge over the past many months um, and I don't have a lot of people that I can talk to about knitting in my regular life actually um, so I decided that I want to do this even though I don't have any kind of platform at all um, just on the off chance that somebody might stumble upon this and and take the same joy in it that um, that I take in some other vlogs that I watch. This is Sandy. Um, Sandy is a very very cuddly, very naughty kitty. Um, but we have a detente when it comes to my knitting. Um, and he likes to sit on my lap when I sit on the couch and knit, which I do on most of my days off. I'm just going to put this curtain down for a sec. Okay, that's good. You can see me better. Um, so, um, those, I don't know, the structure of this is going to be a little funny because I haven't done it before. And I also don't think anyone's going to watch it. Um, but... I will just tell you, um, I am wearing the So Summer shirt by Jessie May. Um, I put this through the dryer on hot, which was not really my intention, but um, I did, and it, it shrunk significantly. Um, and it still fits me, but now it's more of like a boxing tee, like... If I wore it with a bra, there would be some under boob happening sometimes. I mean, it's really not very long. So I've been wearing it over um, this black tank top. And uh, I literally wear it every day that I have off, which is, I don't know, three or four days a week. Um, truly, I love this shirt so much. And... Um, it is in knit in Holstgarn Coast, um, which is a wool cotton blend. Um, it's held double. It is just such a pleasure to knit with. Um, I learned about Coast from a knitter named Hannah Singleton, who's also a designer, um, and she was a test knitter for the So Summer set, um, and she knit hers in Coast. Um, I had never knit with a wool cotton blend before. I was really curious about it. Um, and then I went to their website, and they have, like, just the most stunning array of colors. Um, and also, it's extremely affordable, even though uh, it ships from Denmark. I mean, it's really, I think that this, it cost me, I don't know, it's like three bucks a ball or something for like 383 yards in a 50 gram ball. Um, and this shirt, I believe, took, uh, I want to say like six and a half balls. Um, this is the Coco colorway. It's a beautiful, like, soft, kind of purpley, almost brown. Um, one of the journeys that I have been on with my knitting and also just sort of in general over the past few months is um, to learn more about seasonal color analysis and to figure out what my season is. This is something that I've been aware of for a really long time because my grandmother um, was an interior designer in the 80s when um, 
seasonal color analysis first became very popular. There's this book called Color Me Beautiful, um, which it's kind of outlined, um, you know, how basically the idea is that every person in the world falls into one of four categories. So, um, you know, and their seasons. So spring, summer, fall, winter, and that each season has kind of a set color palette that includes bright colors and neutrals, um, and, you know, more and less pigmented colors that, uh, somebody would fall into. So maybe at some point, um, I will make a video about the things that I have learned about this entire system. Um, now, there are a few different seasons of 12, uh, there are a few different systems of seasonal color analysis. Um, there's one that I have been paying attention to, which is like a 12 seasons model. Um, the website 12 Blueprints is a, a wealth of knowledge around this, um, and the color analyst who um, runs that website, Christine Skamen, also has um, a vlog and she does these very short videos um, where she kind of talks about different aspects of seasonal color analysis and also analyzes kind of like celebrity style color evolution um, and they're really fun and very informative if you are interested in color in that way. In any case, um, for just to, to have a sort of semi-abbreviated version of this, for many years I believed that I was a winter, which is the most high contrast um, color season. Um, lots of like very dark colors, very bold colors, um, very icy colors. And I thought I was a winter for a few reasons. One is that I believe that um, my coloring can hold up to black pretty well. Um, you know, black kind of like looks good on everyone, um, but when you start to pay more attention, that's not uh, necessarily totally true. Um, there are some people who look like stunning in black. Um, it really like brings all of their features and, and natural colors together. There are some people who look like pretty good in black. Um, and you know, black is really slimming, um, for everybody and, you know, seems to look pretty elegant on most people. Um, Anyway, I thought I was a winter because when I was a child, I was platinum blonde and had, like, bright red lips. Um, and I'm extremely pale. So, you know, once my mom tells this story about how once, like, I was on a playground and this woman came up to her and was like, oh, what lipstick did you put on her? It was like five. This is also the John Monet Ramsey era, so... Um, children wearing lipstick was semi-commonplace. Maybe it is now, too. I don't know. In any case, um, as I've gotten older, my hair has darkened significantly, um, and my lips sometimes can still be pretty bright. I've never really worn lipstick, um, or any kind of makeup, for that matter. Um, I've worn lipstick occasionally, eye makeup I have never figured out how to apply properly. <laughs> um, uh, I don't really want foundation or blush or anything like that on my face just as like a personal preference. Um, I'm very happy not wearing makeup. Um, but in any case, um, I feel like over time as I've grown up, um, my kind of like general colors have uh, muted significantly, but I still clung to this idea that I was a winter for such a long time. Like even after I really started diving into color analysis, I thought that. And then at some point I 
you know, there's this um, app where you can, like, take your picture. Um, and... Oh, my God, what am I even saying? There's this app where you can upload a picture of yourself, um, and it tells you, like, what season it thinks that you are. And I had done this so many times and always came up with some version of summer, um, which also, like winter, has, like, kind of a cool base um, in all of the colors that are part of the palette. Sorry, this is so distractingly bright. Okay. Um, that's much better. So, Summer also has like a cool base, um, but it is much more like muted colors and the way that it is kind of described by some color analysts is like the lighter colors on the summer end of the spectrum are more pastel and they have like more kind of, of a gray undertone to them. And um, the colors, the light colors on the winter side of the spectrum are more icy um, and they really have like a white undertone. So I always thought the pastels really washed me out. Now in retrospect, I'm feeling like the pastels that I thought really washed me out actually were more icy colors. Um, I don't know. It's all very confusing. You can pay hundreds of dollars to have your colors like done by a professional, and maybe at some point I'll do that for myself, but I honestly don't really know if I want to do that. I really have been enjoying just like learning about this by myself and um and I've been wanting to kind of like gravitate more towards the colors that are part of my seasonal color palette um in my wardrobe. I also always thought that brown looked terrible on me. Um, and then was like, no, I know that there is a brown as part of the color palette of summers that will look great. And I ordered this yarn from Holst Garn. Um, this like soft purpley brown and I, uh, I mean, I don't know, you can say what you want about it, but I think that it really suits me. Um, and makes me look alive and vibrant, which is the, the whole point of um, finding your color palette is that you then can pick the colors, um, even if they're not colors that you necessarily would have thought that you would gravitate towards, that really bring your face to life. So there's a lot more about that. I've now talked about that for like seven minutes. Oh well. Anyway, um, that's how I landed on this cocoa colorway. I don't think I have any other brown clothes at all because I always thought that brown looked terrible on me. Um, and I'm really into this brown. I have the entire So Summer set, so I knit this shirt and I also knit the So Summer shorts, which are super cool, really fun pattern. Um, my legs are like the part of my body that gets the coldest and so I, I haven't worn them a lot. Um, sometimes I'll wear them to bed, but mostly I just have been wearing leggings when I'm around the house. Um, yeah, so I guess I can structure this. I'll play around with it. I guess I can structure this the way a lot of other people structure their knitting vlogs. So, um, kind of go through my whips um, and then my finished objects and um, then acquisitions of which I have many because let me tell you I have a yarn accumulation problem I actually have run out of space um, now and like actually truly have to stop buying yarn for a while because I don't have anywhere to put it <laughs> um, Anyway, I'll start with my whips. My general thing that I do with whips is I usually have two, um, usually no more than three. I generally try to have like 
one gift project um, and then one thing that I'm knitting for myself at any given time. And I also like to have one kind of more complicated project that requires a lot of concentration and one more kind of like simple meditative project that I can work on when I'm at work um, or when I'm on the bus. At this point in my life, um, I truly don't feel at ease unless I have um, unless I have some knitting with me. And I actually have become pretty fast because um, it's like literally all that I do with my spare time. And I, I just can't wait on my days off to settle down with my more complicated project and, and really plug away and make some progress on it. Um, anyway, blah, 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 blah. So these are my whips right now. Um, the first is um, a Ripple Bralette DK from Jessie May also. Um, I really, I so deeply adore and appreciate Jessie May's patterns. Um, if you haven't knit from her, I really recommend it. Her patterns are really clear, um, so they're really beginner friendly, I think. Um, they also seem to be like universally flattering on all body types. Um, she also explains really clearly like what kinds of modifications you can make um, for different preferences and body types. The yarn I'm using um, is Knit Picks Cotton, so it's a cotton linen blend. I've used this yarn once before um, for a four quarters top, um, which is a pattern, a very beautiful pattern that I wound up having a lot of problems with. Um, that's from the most recent Pom Pom Mag, which is quilt inspired. Um, I'll, I'll pop in a picture of the four quarters top because it really is a beautiful design. Um, I would knit it differently if I knit it again, which at some point I will. Hold please, I have to plug in the computer. I also have to say, I mean, so I'm not going to make like really significant effort to make these be a manageable length. Um, and the reason is that if somebody does happen to stumble upon this, um, I have noticed that in a lot of the knitting vlogs that I watch, um, I, I love when they're longer. I really do. I love when they're chatty. Um, I love when they go really in depth about things. And, um, and a lot of times after like 20 minutes or something, the person will be like, oh, this is getting so long. Oh my gosh, I have to shut up. And I'm like, please, no, don't. Um, so I'm going to make it as long as it takes. And I bet there's somebody out there who will like that. If anyone ever watches my knitting vlogs. <laughs> um, anyway, this Kotlin. I accidentally bought like three times as much as I needed for the pattern. I've gotten a lot better about estimating yarn amounts over time, um, but I, it just, I don't have any idea how I was so off, but I was really off. Um, so I have like a ton of this Kotlin now. Um, it's a really nice yarn to wear super soft against the skin especially after you wash it you can machine wash and dry it um, this colorway is called Carrera I believe um, it's kind of like a dark steely gray it's a little bit of a warmer gray so it's actually not um, like exactly exactly part of my color palette um, but I I really like gray and I think that it um, is for a person with a pale colored cat a better choice of neutral than black. Um, 
I have a lot of black clothes that I that I don't even bother trying to get the cat care off of anymore because it's impossible. Um, oh my god, why is my screen turning off? Okay, so in any case, um, I'm knitting this in the 22.5 inch size. I made one of these bralettes um, last year and had a few issues with it, none of which were the fault of the pattern. So one is that um, I didn't really knit it with enough bust support. Um, so there was like, it was like this much under boob when I wore it. Um, which was just not that comfortable, really. Um, so this time I have knit the ribbing both tighter um, and longer for some additional support at the bottom. And I'm also probably going to knit um, this part higher. Um, and I'm probably going to try it on partway through and see see what happens. The other problem that I had with the other one that I made was that I made a yarn. I made it out of a yarn that was wool um, and more itchy. I actually usually don't have a problem wearing wool, even like 100% wool against my skin. Um, I'm a girl of the north and I have had a lot of practice um, wearing wool in my life. So I think that that contributes um, I'm very lucky not to have a wool allergy. But wearing wool against your nipples um, is a different story. It was not that comfortable. So I decided to make it out of this summer yarn. 22.5 um, is a significant amount of negative ease for me. Um, my I have a 37 to 38 inch bust depending on the time of the month and what underwear I'm wearing and all that. Um, so it's about 15 inches of negative ease. Um, so this is, it looks really tiny. It's going to stretch a lot. Um, and I wanted to knit it on the small size because I know from experience that um, summer plant-based fibers um, don't like they stretch and then they stay stretched um so I don't know we'll see how this goes I started it two days ago because I just finished a really big project and I wanted um something really like fast and satisfying that I could wear right away and that would be um like just really good for the summer so I'll probably I'll wear this under tank tops I might wear it to bed by itself when it's hot out um, under my like overall jumpsuit kind of situations um, yeah beautiful love it love everything about it I did I am uh, going on the wild side and I did not swatch for this the reason being that um, I've knit it before. Um, I've knit with this yarn before. I kind of have an idea about how both the pattern and the yarn work. Um, and I can try it on as I go. And also, like, and this is one of the things that's really cool about Jesse May's uh, Ripple collection um, is that it's just so stretchy. It's going to be really forgiving. So, uh, we'll see how that turns out. Um, I didn't swatch it all for like many years and made all kinds of weird lumpy garments that didn't really fit very well and didn't understand why. Um, and I have gained a lot more knowledge about that and I do, I do swatch, um, for almost all of my projects now, except like shawls and stuff. This is the first uh, garment that I have not swatched for. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Um, 
this, uh, yeah, you can see it a little bit more up close. Beautiful. Okay, um, I only have one other whip right now, and it is a gift, um, and I am loving it. So, this is the Rift Tea. What's hmm, happening? Um, this is the Rift Tea by Jacqueline Seaslack. Um, it is going to be pretty sheer. Um, it's for my mom, so I don't, I don't actually know how she's going to do with sheer, but I think she'll wear it probably over a t-shirt or something if she's uncomfortable. Um, and it is, I was looking for like an affordable linen yarn to try knitting with. Um, this is BC Garn Lino. I'm really enjoying knitting with it. It feels pretty coarse right now, but when I swatched, um, it really softened up a lot. And so I, my mom, this is going to be for my mom's birthday, which is at the end of July. And I'm hoping, um, to finish it in time so I can like wash and dry it a bunch of times before I give it to her so it's really soft when I give it to her. Um, this is a beautiful pattern. If you haven't knit a pattern from Jacqueline Seaslack, I really recommend that you do. She also is a really clear pattern writer and she includes a lot of information about how to modify patterns to fit different body shapes and sizes so she has instructions that are really clear about how to make a custom fit bicep um, and how to do bust darts and kind of what differences the bust darts will make in the in the pattern um, she talks about like how using like substituting a different yarn weight will affect your pattern um, this yarn is sport weight this is knit on um, size 8 needle so it's working up super fast I started it pretty early because I was like oh my god I'm not going to finish this before her birthday but I am prop I started this like hmm, 10 days ago haven't been knitting on it every day um, and it's it's like basically almost done I'm this is the front panel um, above the sleeve split so I just and it's almost done so I have like a few more rows of this then I have to knit the back panel um, it's short sleeved so that's not going to take very long um, the the really cool detail of this pattern is that um, it has like this split hem you can choose to make the um, you can choose to make them different sizes um, I opted to make them the same size um, just because I think that my mom will be more comfortable wearing something like that. Um, I also, she's not going to be really comfortable wearing something cropped, um, so I knit it uh, to be a little bit longer. I believe this once blocked will be 12 inches, um, so it'll sit closer to like her upper hip line um, and then the other really beautiful detail of this pattern is the twisted rib side panel um, and yeah I guess I guess you can't really see that that well but it's really pretty um, yeah this is BC Garn lino. Um, while the yarn feels pretty coarse right now, it also has not hurt my hands at all to knit. Um, the Kotlin, even though it is softer, really has been hurting my hands and I got a callus from it even <laughs> on my palm, um, even though it's like this much fabric. Um, so I don't know. Um, I'm really into the lino so far and there's so many beautiful colors. This is the platinum colorway. Thinking again about seasonal color analysis, my mom also is definitely 
um, a variety of summer. I'm not sure if she's the same variety of summer that I am or not, but this is like a really blue gray. Um, and I think it's just going to look beautiful on her. So super stoked about that too. Those are my only two whips. Um, right now I'm thinking I'll probably finish the bralette today honestly I have the day off and I'm probably just going to like sit and knit literally all day long um and probably have another I don't know two or three hours of work on this um finished objects I'm interested in how to show those to you because um I I haven't ever shown you a finished object before so they're all new to you. Um, I do show pretty much all of my finished objects on my Instagram. Okay, I've actually made a lot more than this in the past month, but these are the things that are accessible right now and not like in an enormous laundry pile. So, two of these are Jessie Mae patterns also. So, this is the eh, so summer crop um which jesse released last summer i made one that i wore probably almost every day where the temperature was over 80 um so i knew i had to make some more so this is made with um a few different mini skeins from the fiber and color black cinema advent which came out in February. Um, these colorways are all inspired by how Stella got her groove back and were all made by um, fully spun just an amazing black dyer. So um, this is called, this colorway is called Spa Day, I believe. This is perfect weather um, and this is August 6th. Um, I love all these colors. This is a little bit more like, I don't know, a little bit, I guess you could say busier than something that I would normally wear, but um, I love the silhouette so much. I made it with these, oh my god, how awkward. Um, I made it with these crossbody straps. Um, it has really good coverage. It is actually almost more of a bralette. Um, so I've been wearing it with like high-waisted leggings um, and under other stuff. Next. Okay. This little number is, oh my god, I can't even ever remember which side is which. Okay. This is the back. So, how gorgeous for these colors. Um, this is in James Makes Yarn. Um, he has a few different bases now, but um, he only had this base at the time that I got these colorways. This is called Grandma's Bathroom. This is called It's a Mystery. Oh my god, I have to pee. I'm so sorry. Okay, my lesson for my next vlog is that um, I need to plan better. <laughs> so I'm not running away from the camera all the time. Anyway, um, Grandma's Bathroom... I faded it into it's a mystery I love how these colors go together um, this is the beauty school top by poison girls Amy Apple she makes these beautiful vintage inspired designs um, I made this a little bit looser around the belly than the pattern suggests because I have a little bit of a curvier belly. Um, so I'm usually like somewhere in the range of a size medium, um, but maybe more in the range of a 
large in terms of belly measurements. So I decreased less than the pattern suggests. Um, I also was unable to make the sleeves because they have a short row construction. Um, really beautiful. I didn't have enough of either of the, I had one skein of each of these and I didn't have enough of either to, um, what am I saying, to make the sleeves in one color. Um, figuring out the fade was a little bit too, felt a little bit too challenging to me at the time, although I'm sure I could have. Um, you can make a version of this that doesn't have the mock neck. I love a good mock neck. Um, and I actually really like how this turned out sleeveless, even though that's not a recommended modification. Um, but I just think this silhouette is so beautiful and I will definitely be making one again. Okay, anyway, um, beauty school top. We'll definitely be knitting one of these with three quarter sleeves and one with cap sleeves and in solid colors and I have some yarn in mind that I wanna use for one of those. So that's that. I actually finished this in March, but it was what was accessible to me. Okay, um, excuse my um, camera wardrobe change. This is another Jessie May design. One moment. Oh my god. I need to start putting tags and things or something because I literally never know what the back is of anything that I make. Okay. I figured it out. Um. This is a cozy classic light crop and this is like the most beautiful item of clothing that I own, maybe. Um, I knit it in Juniper Moon Farm, ooh, I don't know how to pronounce it, Anya, I believe. Um, it's spelled A-I-N-E, it's Gaelic. Um, and again, I was on my like color neutral journey and was wanting to find um, sort of like a soft beige that would suit me. This is knit in the sand castle and summer cloud colorways knit together. And let me see if I can make it obvious how it looks. Oh, it is just so beautiful. Um, the silk is a dream. Truly, like it just is perfect for summer. This is going to be really cozy in winter too. This is such a flattering silhouette. This is a small, which is one size down from um, what I usually do. And as you can see, um, it has a lovely drape and it's not too tight. Um, the only modification that I really made, which you can't even really tell, is that um, you know, so it's a raglan construction, so you have like part of the sleeve created um, and then you go back to it. So I, when I was in this, um, it's actually this much done and then you kind of just have to do however much end you want to do. So your, uh, the pattern suggests knitting the body with a size 5 needle, which I did, and the ribbing with a size 3 needle. Um, and I didn't want to do magic loop. Wait, is that true? Anyway, uh, I used a smaller needle than suggested, and I didn't like pick up on the bigger needle and then switch to the smaller needle. I picked up on the smaller needle. So there's a little bit more of almost even like a subtle puff sleeve effect here, and I just love it. I love it. I love everything about this garment. Um, I was worried that knitting with 
a silk lace weight yarn even like with two strands held together was going to be really annoying but um this just like flew off my needles um I think that knitting with one strand would be more difficult knitting with two strands was truly a dream anyway those are the finished objects that I am going to share with you right now um Oh god, and I don't really want to grab my acquisitions because ugh, there's so many of them. So that's going to wait for a different time. I'm going to stop crouching because it's uncomfortable. Welcome to my um, messy couch. Anyway, oh my god, just seriously, make one, make one. I have um, also like a full length cozy classic light that I made with James Make His Yarn. Also, um, it looks like funfetti. It's so comfortable. It's like just warm enough. I have knit so many projects with fingering weight yarn this year that when I knit with anything, even like sport weight, it feels like it goes so fast, um, which actually is kind of nice. Um, this took me a week. It was, yeah, very fast because it's so cropped. But anyway, um, and that's it for now. Thank you for viewing or not viewing my knitting vlog. I'll be more organized next time.